I think we'll give him a breather, and I'd like to ask him oh. a few questions, because really it's been so long since we uh, crossed paths. It's like uh, or last swords. time. <laughs> oh, yeah, or something. Actually, it has to be in the 30s when we both um, kicked this town around, up and down, back and forth, and Bill uh, was rehearsing a big band, and uh, he had probably the greatest Chicago musicians were in that Well, it was, it was in the Depression days. Did and, you guys uh, ever get a job? Well, yes, we did. We, we finally got Guyon's Paradise Ballroom. Have they torn that down yet? I guess so. I think <laughs> parking lots? Well, anyway, we just, we just had a wonderful band, and, and uh, it was in the Depression days, and nobody had any money. So we decided we'd rehearse every day. So we, we had 17 pieces. Wasn't uh, Tashmacher in that band? Yes. Frank Tash, Tash, Frank Tash was in that band, and he was playing lead alto like nobody alive have ever played it since. But he was in that band, and we rehearsed. We finally got Guyon's Paradise Ballroom. And when you got Guyon's, you were, you were really a third-class spot, wasn't it? <laughs> I, never were, I never got that far. We, worked, <laughs> we, we rehearsed 16 months for a third-class spot. Now you can figure this one out. But anyway, art was art was around then, and it was uh, this was just a wonderful town then. There was no money in the depression. I mean, no money. We used to rob the milkman and steal from the guy that brought the eggs. You know. That, that was the days before three guitars meant everything. Of course, <laughs> this, there wasn't any guitars around then. No, <laughs> break them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. And the reason I mentioned uh, Frank Teschmark because he's such a legendary name. I mean, he. Uh, what did he make? two or three recordings on clarinet, and nobody knew that he played alto until... Uh, well, uh, ev everyone thought that uh, Tesh was, uh, you know, uh, 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 was pr probably one of the great clarinet clarinetists in those days. But uh, the, the real thing that he did, he played one of the greatest lead elders that I've ever heard in my life. He could swing a whole section of, of, of saxophones, you know. I'm just marvelous. Is that, is, well, I was thinking, were, were there many places, were, were there many places to work for a band in, in Chicago? I know the piano players were all right, they could play a lot. Oh, you mean back in those days? Yeah. Well, as soon as they lifted the Dep Depression, uh, I, I once had a job where uh, the boss said he didn't like me, and I went across the street and hired the trumpet player to play my job, and I took his. <laughs> so there was that many jobs, you know. <laughs> oh, sure. This was the, uh, probably one of the greatest jazz towns in the whole world, Chicago. There wasn't any doubt about it. Everybody important was here. Yeah. You, you could um, you know, walk down the street. Uh, haven't you had this experience? You can walk down the street in the south side and hear more music accidentally than you yeah. hear today on purpose. Oh, sure. Absolutely. No doubt about it. I once got to, uh, a band together. Uh, somebody said they wanted a band at Tin Pan Alley which was a place that you used to have to slide down to get into, like a little slide going down. And uh, somebody said, they need a band at Tin Pan Alley. Seven minutes later, I had two bands ready to rehearse. <laughs> <laughs> there was some talk that you left Milwaukee sort of hur hurriedly. Is that true, or did you just, uh, they just talk? Well, they found out that I stole their clock out of the courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the greatest stories about Wild Bill Davidson, if I may tell it, I think I may because he's, he'll bear with me, was the time you played, um, uh, I think it was Philadelphia, when um, uh, some hall, I forgot, anyway, after the, it, you was with the Condon Band, and when they left town, there was a hue and cry because there was a certain letter that Sibelius, the, uh, the s symphony uh, writer, I guess you'd call him, yeah. uh, wrote, thanking the Philadelphia Orchestra for how great they played their music. The way I heard the story was that the next day after you got to New York, you went up to see Pee Wee Russell, opened this clarinet case, and there was the letter. <laughs> oh, but you, oh, <laughs> that was the, uh, the, our Constitution. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I took it back. I know you did. I know it. It was yeah. a beautiful story. I love to steal, but I take it all back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you want? Well, I'll tell you one thing. Bill doesn't steal any music. When he plays, he plays from in here. And uh, I think we better get back to playing because there's so much so. more to it.